the stapler. <laughs> I heard Mike had to give up that nice suit. Yeah? You got too attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Palmese has been a disease since he was five. He had it covered. Don't make things any easier. My uncle's a stubborn man. Stubborn enough to go to war? Now, what is that? There hasn't been a war since the Colombo thing. Everybody decided. No one's going to the mattresses this day and age. I got a top-of-the-line pastopedic in my house. Fuck it. <laughs> Jackie hadn't gotten sick. None of this would have happened. When you're right, you're right. It's one of us captains got to step up. If I can control the top, it's fucking up this whole family. Well, that's true. Say that again. But I know if the old man were here, instead of in that cell in Springfield, moment. Go easy with the grease gun, okay? What? Well, you're the boy wonder. Both him and Jackie both had you picked from day one. Now you got the age, you got the seniority. I also got an 18-year-old with MS, okay? I told Lucci I'd be doing less, not more. All the respect to your cripple kid, you just don't want to wire up your ass. You don't want the headache. You see, that's why you should be lost. You're so fucking smart. And it's physically challenged. Absolutely. Why don't we run this thing like a council? Larry, the old guys set this up as a paramilitary organization. We need a supreme commander at the top, not the fucking Dave Clock Five. Now face it, T. You and Junior are gonna have to duke it out. You gotta be boss. Number one, I love the man. Number two, he's got New York behind him. Not for anything, God bless your uncle. But he's living in the wrong century, and New York knows it. You want a team? You'll get them, okay? It's the right thing. It's inevitable. I don't want no disturbance. Tell me why this was a smart move to make Junior the big willy. Look at him. He's content. Thinks he's the king of kings. Truth is, every decision is made by me. I still worry about the money end. It's because that's what you do, you worry. He doesn't know we kicked back to Jackie. We're gonna do good. Point is, he's got the title. He's a happy fucking camper. The house is secure. Yeah, knowing now we got a brand new lightning rod on top to take the hits. Smart. Very smart. Yeah, and now you got Bloomfield and the union chair. <laughs> well, otherwise you'd fuck me, Larry, but you wouldn't respect me in the morning, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was the only one Junior could make look like that. All right, let me hear it. What's the Irish? What about him? He took a header off the faults. That's the closest that junkie fuck ever got to a bath. Yeah, well, I got news for you. That junkie fuck was my biggest earner. During the football season, he moved more cards than 10 guys put together. And another thing, a certain friend of ours should have checked with me before he did a favor for the old man Capri. You're losing me. Irish was the one who sold Capri's grandson that shit. I think you created a fucking Frankenstein in Junior. I created? We all agreed to let Junior have his day. Let him be the lightning rod. And when lightning strikes, God forbid, and somebody goes down, it's not a young man with a family. You remember this? We all agreed. Yeah, we agreed. But who the fuck expected to get raped over here? I mean, when Jackie was acting boss, no one minded, because it all evened out at the end of the day. But your uncle, Madame, does he eat alone? He doesn't even pass the salt. <laughs> what about that Sammy Grigio card game? That fucking Mikey smacked him around. That ain't right. Come on, Jimmy. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Junior was right. He had a position. That game wasn't paying anybody. The minute Sammy Grigio used Jimmy's name, it should have been end of story. That's right. <sighs> what do you want me to do? Hey, we made our bed, we sleep, and we're all men. But how long are we going to continue to kick upstairs without it hurting you? I mean, something, anything, should trickle down over here, no? All we want you to do is talk to him. After all, he's your uncle. Come on. That's right. OK, 
Okay, I'm no good at speeches. Yeah, you almost fucking dime, you'll hear some great speeches. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Yarda, let me talk. Go ahead, Go talk. Ahead. I was only kidding. Go ahead. Ron, you look gorgeous. By the way, who's your date? I'll give you who's your date. <laughs> Come here. Uh, yeah. Let's see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Melissa was beautiful up there. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Oh, Mama Liv, you're going to stay, darling. Listen to him without my mm. darling. I am nobody's darling. This one here, she never disappoints you, I tell you that. Are you still seeing your other women, Lorenzo? <coughs> Come on, Ma. Let's mingle. Sorry, the older she gets, the worse she gets. Yeah, listen, I heard some disturbing shit last night. I wanted to talk to you about it. But with the rehearsal dinner and everything, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah. I, uh, here's the priest, though. I'll be right Go back. ahead. Federal indictments? Yeah. Where the fuck you get this? I got a guy who owes me. He's got a gumada who works at FBI headquarters as a word processor. Oh, when's it coming down? I don't know. When she knows, she'll tell me. Indictments? What the fuck are you talking about? Are you sure about this? Oh, it ain't just my source in Jersey. Half of New York moved to Fort Lauderdale already. Hey, Mama Olivia, how are you? Do you remember me, Larry Boy Barizzi? Well, I know who you are. Yeah, you lit an apartment house on fire and scared your mother half to death. <laughs> Mama's moving in here on the 15th. Ooh, I like your shoes, Larry boy. Yeah, Mama hasn't been well in the mind. Last week, she threw a jar of artichokes at me. Well, she better not throw any artichokes at me. <laughs> Ma, how you doing? Remember, Larry? Water under the bridge. Yeah, we're gonna take a walk. We'll be right back. You should get some shoes like his. I'll tell you something, Tony. You've always been a fucking genius, but this last move was the best move you ever did. The feds are never gonna surveil an old folks home. Yeah, I know. That's why I got six truckloads of bootleg pilot coming in. <laughs> hey, there James. How you doing? Did you get your mother settled into a suite yet? They're not sure they're gonna accept her. They want to see my financial statement again. So this office supply chain coming up from Virginia. What's the deal on them? I spoke to them. I think they're gonna listen to reason on minority hiring. <laughs> You been any games? Yeah, there you go. Okay, we know what we're gonna do. Till the government indicts, anyway. Jimmy, this answers your concerns? I think a lot of good ground was covered. Okay, I guess that's it. Yeah, you gotta get the tickets, you know. I got him already, don't worry. Fuck. Carrado Soprano, FBI. Fuck. Are you Lawrence Barisi? Oh, what the fuck? Joseph Sasso, you're under arrest. Junior Soprano, alleged boss of the New Jersey crime family that bears his name, was indicted today on federal racketeering charges. FBI and local police... Talk about fucking time, and he's lucky he's still alive. Soprano, ...along with Lawrence Larry Boy Barisi, ailing alleged underboss Joseph Beppi Sasso, and 13 other reputed mob figures. Oh my God, it's Uncle Junior. Yeah. Look at the old guy, making him do the perp walk. A legitimate businessman. Dad, cut the crap. Go blow dry your hair. Settling down, huh? One door opens, another door closes. It's a fucking expensive proposition, though. I didn't need that shit that happened the other day. You don't need that shit that happened the other day. You talk to the king of Dermabrasion about what went down. I'm talking to him, and he's looking at his reflection in the plexiglass. <laughs> Imagine getting a facelift. <laughs> One week later, you're in jail. Can you imagine that? You get a facelift, and one week later, you're in jail? Anyway, uh... I had the feeling you didn't like what you were hearing. Now we expected to get fucked out of that bit. Now, that's a sad commentary. Richie, what's Larry gonna do? The fucking guy's a guest of the government. Yeah, well, some people are stuffing themselves. Some people are out there stuffing themselves. Only Larry's got a trial coming up. He's in no position to go into the unknown, not known. How about you, Albert? You're weighing any time. I'm with him. 
All things being equal. No. Make a move against Tony Soprano. No way. I don't know what to tell you. We are still hopelessly deadlocked. One juror refuses to deliberate and can't be reasoned with. What should we do now? Your Honor, again, I must move for a mistrial. Your Honor, the government asks that you give them another Allen charge to go back and try again. As much as I'd like to, this jury's been at it a long time. I don't see where one or two more days is going to change anything. Bring in the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I see that you are hopelessly deadlocked, and I have no choice but to declare a mistrial. I know that you did the best you could. You have performed a valuable service. You may be excused. <laughs> Cheese held up. He said it's twelve an hour. Right? Yeah. Right. What can we say about this guy? The ancient Romans had a word for it. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> In all candor, though, we love you, Raymond. Bon Natal. Chen down. Chen down. Good luck. Larry. What the fuck are you doing here? I thought you were in a house arrest. Fuck them. I ever see that prison doctor, God forbid? I'm going to say, hey, fuck stick. They ever show you these in medical school? They're called balls. <laughs> Good for you. Poor fucking feet, Lamont. I told him he sent the wrong ex con back to jail. You realize I had an entire container of a port of provolone coming into that port Saturday? That fucking fill in them, put it on a truck. Took it to Westchester instead of Rawway, where we always split the loads. Ah, oh, Jesus. That shit is liquid gold. Tony knows what has to be done. Tell John where to find Tony Blondetto. He just won't do it. So if he even knows where Tony B is. Give me a fucking break. Of course he knows. It's Christopher I feel for. Please, huh? Let me tell you something. Anthony Soprano was very adroit at keeping his family out of the fucking frying pan. Both cousins. The rest of us... For now, not personal questions relating to yourself, but about the family. Yeah, Vito, the sports book in Roseville. By rights, that should go to me now. Eugene was with me. Oh, what did I just say? Not about yourself. What do we do about Junior? He's in jail. That puts him out of our reach. Not necessarily. He's a demented old fuck. I say we do nothing, let him rot. Several all ties and this embarrassment right now. He Marvin Gaye, his own nephew, the boss of his family. What happens to Junior is Tony's call. That's right. Bobby, all due respect, where the fuck were you that night? Why was the skipper babysitting Junior? I had other family obligations. It's my wife. Tony volunteered. Are we done? T, I want to introduce you to Carmine Lupatazzi, my co-executive producer on the project. Nice to finally meet. I heard tidbits of what Chrissy's got in mind, the genre and so forth. But JT, I got to warn you. I'm very hands-on. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> uh, I want to welcome all of you to the first meeting of possible investors on this project. Some of you know I've had nine pictures under my subspecies. Four in the South Beach Strumpet series alone, each with 30,000-plus DVDs in print. That being said, I usually find it helpful at this stage to include my prospective partners and get your inputs, or notes, as we call them. Right now, it's called Pork Store Killer, but I'm thinking just Cleaver. I'm confused. You said he's dead. How's he evening up with anybody? He's a ghost? As I understood, a, a zombie of sorts. Great title, by the way. Sills on the canvas now. Fucking 100% disaster. Point is. Tony goes, let's face it, somebody's gonna have to step into the breach. I'm a young man. And now, without the weight, I'm a healthy man with longevity. 
Always hiding Skip's out. Skip's gonna make it. He's got you. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so, in keeping with this long-standing tradition of doing everything ass fucking backwards, <laughs> we are gathered here tonight for the bachelor party of already married man Christopher Montesan. <laughs> like I always say, man is not complete till he's married. Then he's finished. <laughs> Good see. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Hey. Fuck Ben Kingsley. Danny Baldwin took him to fucking acting school. Very well directed, Morgan. I think there's potentially more money in this than in the porn we've done. So what do we think? We need the extra scene or not? I like it the way it is. I don't know, Chrissy. These audiences today love blood. I tend to agree with Carlo. I'm thinking one more sexy kill. When Michael follows Centrella to the strip club, what if he chop up one of the women? who, as faith would have it, was at one time Sally Boy's mistress. Two extra shoot days at a minimum. Kid, if it buys us a bullshit theatrical release... I'd have to get more money from Tony. I want this fucking thing out there. Yeah, T, what's up? You coming down? Please. You don't give two shits about production. It's a little boring, I gotta say. I mean, that was surprising to me. Larry and I hung out at the set. I don't know if you know this, but the actors, they don't make up what they say. Oh, it's true. Even De Niro, the girl told me. The script girl. Lorenzo Barisi. Hey, how you doing, my friend? You getting enough to eat? Brian Raleigh, U.S. Marshal Service. In terms of your bail, can find you to your home, sir. Say hello to Danny. Yeah. Larry! Call a fucking lawyer! <laughs>